Hey, this is Mr. W, and this video is an introduction to cells. This video and its connected tutorial at sciencemusicvideos.com is designed to help you explain what cells are, the basic features that all cells share, the differences between eukaryotic and prokaryotic cells, and the cell theory. Cells like this one and this one are the basic units of life. And when you see them in videos or in your textbook, it's hard to understand how small they really are. This is one meter divided into 1,000 equal lengths, and you have one millimeter. Here's a photograph of a AAA battery. It's about 10 millimeters in diameter. Now, imagine taking one millimeter and dividing it into 1,000 equal lengths. Each one of those lengths is a micrometer, also called a micron. The smallest cells are less than a micrometer in size, and the largest are about 100 micrometers. Again, think about the scale. A large cell is one-tenth of a millimeter. To get a sense of what these systems are like, let's simplify down to the bare minimum. Cells are systems with a very clear boundary. That's their membrane, and it controls what enters and leaves the cell. Cells have genes, hereditary material made of DNA. The DNA sends messages in the form of a molecule called messenger RNA to particles called ribosomes, which synthesize proteins. Proteins are the machinery of life. They copy the DNA. They do whatever needs to happen in order to enable an organism to survive and reproduce. And most of that activity happens in this region, the cytoplasm. That's the bare minimum. Cells are membrane-bound systems with DNA, RNA, ribosomes, proteins, and cytoplasm. Without these, you don't have a cell and you don't have a life. Bacteria are among the smallest, simplest cells. The image on the left is a picture taken with a scanning electron microscope of E. coli, a type of bacteria that lives in our guts by the billions. The diagram on the right represents a similar type of cell. Bacterial cells are prokaryotic, which roughly means without a nucleus. What's a nucleus? It's a membrane-bound structure that, in certain types of cells, holds and protects the cell's DNA. A nucleus is found in the other kind of cell, the ones that we have. These are eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic roughly means with a nucleus. Prokaryotic cells are, with some exceptions, the smallest cells in nature, ranging in size from half a micrometer to five micrometers. Prokaryotic cells lack internal compartments, making them much simpler in structure than the eukaryotic cells we'll study in a moment. Being prokaryotes, one of the most important compartments that they lack is a nucleus. You can see that their DNA, which is represented here as this jumbled mass, is within the cytoplasm. Prokaryotic cells have a membrane. They have RNA. It's not shown in this diagram. They have ribosomes, cytoplasm, usually a cell wall, and sometimes other structures like this protective outer capsule or a spinning tail called a flagellum that lets them move. For billions of years, all life was prokaryotic. Here's what the world might have looked like 3.5 or so billion years ago. These mats are mounds of bacteria. Prokaryotes are incredibly successful and abundant. Photosynthetic bacteria transformed our planet by creating our oxygen-rich atmosphere. But they've never evolved beyond being the tiny single cells that they are. Multicellular complexity is something that only happened in organisms like us, the eukaryotes. The eukaryotes include four well-known groups that are multicellular, which means composed of many cells. These are the animals, the plants, the fungi, and the algae. There are also many unicellular eukaryotes, like this paramecium. Eukaryotic cells, with a few exceptions, are much bigger than prokaryotic cells. Here you can see some sperm cells swimming toward an egg. The head of the sperm is small by eukaryotic standards. It's about 5 micrometers by 3 micrometers. The egg is big by eukaryotic standards. It's about 100 micrometers. This diagram represents an animal cell. In addition to size, here are some of the features that it would share with any eukaryotic cell. There's a distinct membrane-bound nucleus surrounding the chromosomes. The chromosomes are linear, as opposed to being the circular chromosomes found in bacteria. Eukaryotes have many membrane-bound internal compartments where specialized functions occur. 
There are organelles called mitochondria, and they make almost all of a eukaryotic cell's ATP, the key molecule that cells use to get work done. In multicellular eukaryotes, you also have cell specialization. Nerve cells, muscle cells, and so on, each playing a specialized role in the organism. Let's end by discussing a key idea in biology, the cell theory. The theory has three parts. The first is that all living things are composed of one or more cells. Here's a paramecium, a single-celled or unicellular organism. And here's a beautiful painting of a multicellular organism, a platypus. There's nothing alive that's not at least one cell. Now you might think that viruses are an exception to that, but viruses aren't independent living things. They're parasites of cells. And if you want to learn about them, you can check out my virus tutorial and my song, I'm a virus. I'm a virus. Why am I holding an onion? Because how does an onion store food? by cells like the ones in this onion bulb. The second part of the cell theory is that cells are the basic units of structure and function in living things. What that means is that all of life's functions are performed by cells along with the higher level structures that cells make up. The third idea is that all cells come from other cells. Every cell in your body is a descendant of the fertilized egg cell, also called a zygote, that you started life as. These cells trace back to a sperm cell and an egg cell that were made by other cells in your mother and father's bodies. And go back to your grandparents and your great-grandparents all the way back to the first cells. That, of course, leads to a question of how the first cells emerged. And that's a question about the origin of life, a topic about which I have a tutorial on sciencemusicvideos.com. I have a lot of resources for you to continue learning about cells. First of all, there's my cell song. I went into a cell to get out of the rain. And there was... I also have a whole unit's worth of tutorials about cell structure on my website. Please support my work by doing a couple of things. First, subscribe to Science Music Videos, this channel. Second, like this video. Third, share this video. You probably know someone for whom it'll be useful. Send it on. Fourth, leave me a comment or a question. Every single one makes my day. And above all, subscribe to my website, sciencemusicvideos.com. It's the best investment in your biology learning. So I'll see you over at sciencemusicvideos.com, and I'll see you here for the next video. Thanks.